Greetings, fellow Bible readers. Welcome to week 47 of our Bible read-through. This week, we finish up the book of Acts, and as we do so, we get to see the message of the gospel spread to the farthest ends of the earth. And then we get to, at the very end of the week, stick our toe, figuratively, into the book of Romans, just sampling the first couple of chapters of that book of the Bible that sums up many of the core teachings of the Christian faith. So let's get down to the details for each day. On day one, as we look at chapters 13 through 15 of the book of Acts, we see Paul's first missionary journey, as well as kind of the aftermath of that missionary journey as the Christian church grappled with how to, to deal with this influx of Gentile believers into a church that was largely dominated by Jewish Christians so far. And so we see how the early Christian church worked to promote unity between these two very dif different ethnic groups. Then on day two, as we look at Acts chapters 16 through 18, notice in Paul's second missionary journey both the physical ops opposition that he faces, as well as the intellectual opposition that he faces, especially in the city of Athens, where he's challenged by a, a great number of thinkers and, and philosophers and people interested in ideas and learning. Then on day three, as we look at chapters 19 and 20, in chapter 20, we get a, a section that puts before our eyes what the ministry looks like. And it's helpful for even modern Christians as Paul talks about his work among those Ephesians and also encourages those Ephesian leaders to continue the ministry, we get a, a wonderful picture and summary of what ministry ought to look like even in the church still today. Then on day four, as we look at Acts chapters 21 through 23, notice how Paul exercised his Christian freedom in such a way as to avoid needless troubles and controversies for fellow Christians. And also notice how he used his Roman citizenship in order to ensure that his work as a, a minister of the gospel got a fair hearing. Then on day five, as we look at chapters 24 through 26 of the book of Acts, notice how Paul, in the various opportunities where he defends himself, ties together the Old Testament and the New Testament. It really stresses the, the unity between those two parts of God's word, that it really is all just one unified message. Then on day six, as we close out the book of Acts with chapters 27 and 28, we see how God used all of the difficulties that Paul went through and even his imprisonment to continue to further the cause of the gospel. That even though Paul was imprisoned in Rome, the message of the gospel was not behind bars, but continued to be freely shared by Paul. Then finally, on day seven, as we look at the first three chapters of the book of Romans, you'll notice very quickly how Paul really stresses the law in these opening chapters. And ultimately, he stresses it so hard that by chapter three, he has come to the point of condemning all people under sin. And then in the second half of chapter three, he helps make clear why it's so important that all people are established as sinners because it's for sinners that Christ Jesus came to win righteousness by his work and to give that righteousness as a free gift by faith. And so we get a, a beautiful little taste of gospel there at the end of the day seven reading. That's all for this week. We'll see you next week.